Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Horsemanship Remark Show. I'm a few minutes late this morning because that update took a tiny bit longer than I had expected. Hopefully it's magical. And hopefully you guys are all here with me this morning. Might need to do a tiny bit of extra setup. Val, Joanne, Jen, good morning. Jody, hello. Michael's here. Faith is here. Let's see. Michael has one hour, you guys, so we have to be done. Everybody watch the clock. We have to be done at uh, 7.30 Pacific. Corey, good morning. Buenos dias. Uh, uh, what do you say back to that? Buenos dias? You just said that back? Yeah, yeah. buenos dias. Buenos dias, Susan. Susan's been studying Spanish with me. Oh. And there's something else that you say back to that that I can't remember. Peggy, good morning. I was just looking at my calendar. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to see you not too long from me. Actually, I'm going to see you sooner than that, aren't I? So, how are you this morning? Can you talk for a second while I get my coffee? Wait. Sure. You should, uh, I should make coffee one of these days. And be all jittery by the end of it. No, you do not need coffee. <laughs> Here we go. All right. I, I only drink coffee when I have a full stomach. I don't know. If I don't, have, if I don't have food in me, it's just the ola. And and something heavy too. Uh, you know what is my secret to success I, recently is green tea in the in the afternoon. I always. It's one of those things, you know, you do, and you're like, that totally works. It really makes you feel better. And then you forget about it. So, Jean, hi, good morning. So, you get to talk this week since um, I talked all last week. You guys, it has taken me one week to get last week's show ready to put on Spotify. Because I know probably a few of you have been waiting for that. Sometimes Instagram is a pill about letting you save the show, but I have my ways. It just took me a while, but I got that's, it. That's pretty powerful. You can, you have your ways against a platform like Instagram. You, you must really know your stuff. It's so annoying that they're purposefully not doing it. Look at my hair this morning. Julie, hi, good morning. Anyway, I don't know. It seems like they should be able to fix it. So I don't know if they're purposefully doing it or not, but every time I'm stressed that it's not gonna work. But anyway, let's talk oh. about rooster. Sounds good. Did you get, get your feeding thing sorted? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, too busy to get that going that quickly. Hmm. It's on my mind to get a, I can talk to the neighbor about getting some alfalfa and figure out how to get it all set up for that. I did put Degamo on a diet though. He's out out during the day and at night. He, uh, I need more top line on him. He's like a little bit skinny overall, but he's got his belly. So the idea is a good bit more exercise and not full on 24 seven eating on that hay net. So see how that works for him. Funny of all the horses that I have on hay nets, uh, which I do this time of year in the middle of the day, a lot of times um, they will all just try to, you know, cause I throw the ones on the ground and they'll be picking at it. Like, you know, with just with their teeth, Noah foot on the hay net. He's the <laughs> like a dog, like a dog on a bone. And I'm right, let me like, hold this thing down. Yep, none of you guys have figured that out. He's like, that's funny. And G, good morning. Um, mm -hmm. I get a turn. Kip has the dryer on. That's gotta be loud. So talk, Michael. Don't hear it. Um, oh, good rides on um, Rooster and Degamo. Both are. Like it kind of dawned on me yesterday with the Almo. Like we've been able to do pretty well everything for a while, movements wise. 
Um, it's just staying relaxed through all those movements. It's like it's it's a pretty different ball game than stay relaxed while I teach you how to do all these things. Um, he knows how to do them all. So now it's just like let's do them with with a level of quality that hasn't been there. And I don't know, somehow that was a realization. So. I read in Ann Gribben's book before I rode with her, I read her say that that's a ripening. Like after the horse knows all the movements, then there's a ripening. I thought that was a cool way to say it. Yeah. So that was the gamo, but just, I mean, coming out of the box a lot softer mentally, just kind of flowing and floating around has been, has been nice for him, I'm sure, but nice to, to feel. Um, rooster, kind of the same thing, a little bit more hit and miss. Some days I'll start a little bit stiffer and requires a little adjustment to say, you know, let's do a little bit more bending there, maybe, and soften up there, rebalance there. Uh, not much, but some days are different, definitely different than others where he just, you know, it's there right off the bat, just soft and smooth and um you know the stephanie used the phrase this week what comes first the chicken or the egg you know is he, he tense or you know not not so much rooster but i think i can't remember what horse it was are they worried because they're out of balance or are they out of balance because they're worried and you know kind of in a guarded place and rooster can kind of be sometimes that way because he will still come out with a little bit of uh, i don't know there's just little, little shades of um apprehension i guess when you start the groundwork in particular um which i don't know i, I feel like i'm kind of surprised this is still there then again if i add it up I really, even though I'm really trying to ride him more consistently, the number of rides I've had in the last little while and the kind of stop, stop start feel to it, which is just always what happens with my horse. That's not mm. that surprising. Um, oh, no, I did not put do not disturb on. Lisa, good morning. Max, good morning. Um, Welcome back. So that, but the same thing. Um, as to Gamo getting on and riding, just everything was more floaty. Um, <laughs> yesterday, Stephanie said, uh, debating how much of this to say. Um, Stephanie, <laughs> now that's the trot. Um, that looks less thoroughbred -y and more, you know, desirable or more because it was just, it wasn't really long so much and just big, but it was, you know, free and loose and very, very springy. And it just kind of started out there. And, you know, from there, I was able to lengthen it and, you know, do a little bit. Um, because it was kind of compact, I just messed a little, little bit with lengthening and shortening, which I haven't been doing very much, but he was, like he was prone to shorten. He was apt to shorten it all up yesterday or you know, bring it all a little bit less long and more up, very springy, while still being loose and, and free in the, forward um so that was kind of cool 
example. And I, in that, he, you, you could feel him thinking canner much more just kind of casually than other times where, you know, I'm either really flowing a loose rein, we're long and just stretched out and we just kind of tip up into it. Or I'm saying, you know, get, get, get put together, shorten the rectangle, step up into this rather than, you know, hurry up or um, poke your nose out a little bit or get out of whack, particularly going to the left, you know, kind of throw his shoulder out a little bit more um, when you you try to put them together, but when he kind of found that very compressed shape on his own, he was just like, hey, why don't we canter? And like, you felt him thinking of it, thinking it, but not um, acting on it. Uh, so that was really cool. And then we pause for a bit. I was talking about something, you know, working with Stephanie on something. And I've kind of been doing little short, short multiple rides, staying in the saddle, but ride, there's a nice change, stop, help someone, watch someone, and go back to it. So I'll do like three or four like Set. sessions or, you know, mm -hmm. little segments. And so then came back or you know, got going again, trotting, felt, felt a little different, um, not quite as compact. I was probably right off the bat started thinking about reaching, but then shortening it up and asking for him to lope off, step up from behind. It was coming out of a trot, but a little bit more of that asking to, rather than just going, hey, you're set up for this, you want to do it, we could just fall right into this going, let's adjust from where we are. We've just been lengthening, shorten up. And it wasn't as much his, um, his idea or his initiative that took us there. He wasn't just doing that already. I had to make the request, help him, you know, get on the same page as me make the adjustment. But then, um, once we got there, there was, it certainly wasn't as available or as immediate as it would have been if I had said canter the segment before, but it, so it took a few strides for him to, to feel me and find his way there. But it was once he started thinking it, you know, it took, it took a little time to say, shorten this and, and really come into that more compressed frame. Then it took, a, you know, a few strides for him to go, oh, yeah, we're, we're getting situated to canter and then loping off. But having thought his way into those when I said, hey, let's adjust some things, giving him the time to feel that, register that, get rid of his like little bit of thought to push into things at first before he softens it was just as available once i got there he just had to because it was my initiating it go oh okay this is what we're doing whereas before it was like so on his brain just coming out of the box you know that's what he probably would have done really if i would have just said do what you want sort of thing like i'm here as a not quite a passenger but i'm just like i feel you thinking canner so let's go for it um but it felt the transition itself felt just as effortless you just felt him searching around or having to take moments to feel oh this is what you want right now so that was kind of cool and just pretty effortless stepping up in, into it from that shorter frame in both directions. What were you going to say? 
first of all, that's super cool. And for those of you guys that don't know, Michael was talking about his his off the track thoroughbred, who is like sixteen three. Nice. Plus, He's tall. Plus or minus, yeah, plus or minus an inch. Uh, really nice shape, but you know, when we talk about putting it all together, it's definitely a lot, a lot of distance back back to front. Well, um, that's what Stephanie was commenting on. It wasn't this like prancy thing that he very easily can get into. Even still, he comes out a little bit chargy, a little bit amped, a little bit, you know, like Mike was roping and he was kind of fine with the swinging the rope, but then he, he was kind of drawing his rope back and it went zing over the roping dummy. And we were like kind of right coming past. It was a little bit in the blind spot and he tucked his tail and went to scoot. So then after that, we're a little bit like this doing his, I'm kind of staying here because the rectangle isn't supposed to be moving right now. And it is very, you know, that's very elevated and springy. And the, the, the difference, obviously, but the difference between that where that was how he knew to trot or how he'd been, how he'd been practicing, uh, attempting to practice that rhythm to change it to not just, okay, now I'm flowing in a loose rein, but to get that more compact shape in a floating manner was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the uh, Noah's Arcs with Katniss yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, but before I say that, I just want to note, so I'm riding the little Remy, you know, and the Arab, and <laughs> He's doing, he's doing so good, making tons of process progress. It's really fun, but let me tell you what, there's no left lead for me. Maybe Sharon had it, but in the round pin, so on a 20 meter circle, no left lead, except online and loose, no problem. But when I'm sitting on him, it's, it is, it is not, I can kind of manufacture it but he trots on the right lead. He canters on that. I just let him canter on the right lead. Of course, you know, I just want him to flow forward. Um, but I just have to note that for the record, because it's been a while that I've, I don't, I mean, it's pretty legit. Like he is on his left feet. <laughs> and I don't have enough going on and also it's trickier in, in the round pen to really like use my outside rein to say, Hey, use your outside hind leg. You know, I don't have that going on yet and really haven't bugged him too much about a soft feel. We're still backing circles and you know, it's, it's so I, but I was thinking up there like interesting, you know, cause I go around and be like, can I get you to think about, shifting your weight to the outside like how sensitive are you about it how searchy are you about what i'm doing you know no he's he is sure that he should be cantering on the right lead and that was the only time he kind of kicked up a few rides ago was when he was stressed out about that. But, you know, the whole game with him is just flow forward, flow forward, flow forward. So I'll have more to report on that, but I didn't want to forget to mention it because it's pretty legit. So here's my strategy. Instead of manufacturing it, which, you know, basically what I would do is, and he kind of sticks his ribs to the left, but he will, roll around hind quarters to the right pretty legit off the left rein so, but i don't have really super a lot of room to leg yield and even if you do then you're making a left-handed turn really quickly in the round pen right so the way to manufacture it is to make a left-handed turn basically and then end up at the round pen fence and then canter left um, but I, 
I guess my point is, I don't feel like it's the right thing to do to obsess over getting that, like manufacturing it. That's my thought right now. So we'll see. Anyway, that, that's all I had to say about that. Um, what the reason it made me think of the Katniss video, oh, I haven't done the Cantor Katniss video yet, but I talk a lot in that about, you know, I'm using my outside rain to have her bend her outside hind leg. Which, could you see anything on that one? Yeah. Dead? Oh. oh. Um, well, I was, I watched it with Kim, actually. I watched it once, but then Kim and I were talking and I was like, hey, you need to have a look at this. And I told her a little bit about our conversation, you know, like how much do you see in the course of this short clip in terms of the little, little changes? I mean, they're so small and imperceptible because there's, it's a feeling. It's not this big, now the head's, you know, going down or now there's this big shift to the outside. You can really see a hind leg doing more or you felt, you know, you see the shoulders open and so much of that is just subtle, subtle feeling things, but there are certainly moments in there where it, it's a little bit because you can't see all the little changes where it's almost like a little pop and it's like that it's a different picture than there was the last you know minute or so or the last circle or the last time we went left or whatever and like that looks different even though when you're going there 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 it's like you can't see those little changes so um like I was telling you, the more you can put words to when you say there, this is what I'm feeling. Although it's almost impossible to do that in the course of a ride because the there, the there, the there happens so quickly, it would take a minute, or maybe not a minute, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to say, when I said there, this is what I felt shifting in her body, right? Because by that point, you're already 50 there, 50 releases later. I'm not 50, but, of you know, many. Yeah. yeah, many releases later. So, um, so I mean, it's just interesting to watch it with our conversation in mind. And the reason I, I told Kim, hey, let's go watch this together is um, I was kind of trying to stress that with her horse I'm just we're doing some stuff in the round pen like capturing the little things i mean it's, it's kind of your your basic you got to capture the little, little things even though they don't feel like much because they add up to the bigger thing and if you wait for the whole you know, the whole picture looks great. And now it's, you know, the horse is going to get discouraged before then or get lost as to, I don't know what you want or quit or whatever. You know? Some horses are, my cat, Katniss wouldn't quit, but she'd certainly get more emotional if you were like looking for a bunch of things to come together and keeping, you know, not or working she would just, the little things. Yeah, or she'd just go off looking for something else well yeah or she just go okay okay i'll do it but without the the quality of looseness that, doesn't she look looser yeah yeah and, just, well, and even like you said i mean that's just <laughs> it's frustrating to me because it's like if i could see all the rides between there and here you know for example, you said, we're starting out at a totally different place. Like yesterday, she's reaching down, which you tried to film. Maybe you should show me the, the, yeah, I the film, that, the video that didn't really work out <clears throat> at your place. But 
um, to see all of the shades between that got to that very different picture from this video to this video how many weeks later and it can happen that quickly like mm -hmm. so that's the hardest thing about sharing these things with you guys is you know it's kind of hit and miss when you have the camera person there and you have you know what what are you gonna do but you know what i was thinking uh, as you just said that out of the video that didn't work so you guys i filmed the short serpentine with katniss uh like two, two days into doing it i think and of course i wish i had the first day but whatever i can't just wait forever but on you for noah's arcs yo oh yes mm -hmm. noah's arcs yes I think, though, that I could look through for the moment she made the connection at Cantor, and at least you could see that, because that was a big change. That was a really a big change. And I have, it's it's maybe 12 minutes or something that I'll, that I'll get up in the next couple days for you guys to see. So Noah's Arcs at Cantor is basically what it is. And that is way more dramatic to see because exactly as you're saying, like she's going from really down to like, da, 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 da. it's so cool. I wish you could ride her right now because yeah. You know how she was just struggling to maintain Cantor in a relaxed way, wouldn't, mm -hmm. you, wouldn't you say? So she's she's sorting that out. But I'll tell you, she was not comfortable to ride the first couple mm -hmm. times. You know, <laughs> legit. And um, so I can totally appreciate that. But for her, she get she's getting so comfortable in herself for multiple strides like you know how her first stride or two was great you had that for years to what degree do you feel like it's work for her like a physical okay this is a, a challenge or is it not knowing how to go that way or some combination thereof it's so fun that we both rode this horse be mm -hmm. before because I know exactly what you're saying because it was a Herculean effort for her. Mm -hmm. to, like every stride was so challenging, but it's getting effortless. Absolutely. Multiple strides are effortless. And on the video that didn't work, what you, what I was saying is I have to show her like, so she, you know how she, her counter departs. So she had that going, but then, you know, you only have velocity for like two strides out of a counter depart. And then you have to get your velocity. Is that the right From, way to say it? Like the forward motion on yeah. velocity might not be the right word. Anyway, that's the word I used. You, you have to have a way to continue to go it canter right so yeah. when her initial depart momentum faded after two strides then so the intellectual thing for her slash feel of course was like it's the outside hind leg girl like you, you have to sort yourself out so that after the first two strides your power is going to come from your outside hind leg versus you know how she'd push off with her inside front foot that was her way to get herself more forward canter strides yeah. and it, and it was and so with and her with, with the length of the rectangle <laughs> well the thrust of your nose out there is like you know then it it like you couldn't keep it back over hand which if you finished what you were gonna say well are you sure you're not gonna forget mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, that was that was the thing. But as you know, she would try to, you couldn't just shorten the rectangle to get it to happen because she would just shorten the rectangle, but it wouldn't change her, you know, the way to propel herself forward. She would just get it done more, you know, using I that. Front end. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, okay, that's not even 
close to going to get you in, in the yeah. right ballpark, horsey, right? So that's where the Noah's Arcs at Cantor is the ticket because you're using the curve to adjust the way of going. So what I said in the video that, that I'll, I'll send you, but I mean, I just don't even know if you're going to want to watch it, but the, the short serpentine leads to the Noah's Arcs at Trot and you had the short serpentine nailed with her years ago, I'm sure. So then it was the Noah's, the, so the Noah's Arcs made perfect sense to her. And that was, that's a big deal right there that, mm -hmm. that she's following her nose, making a curve, knows that like, okay, when the curve gets shortened, I get engaged. So then the Noah's Arcs at Trot led to the Cantor's the Noah's Arcs at Cantor. And that of course was really where she needed help. Although changing her way of going at trot was also, uh, it is also a thing, of course, yeah. because once again, what you're trying to describe to the horse is use your hind legs, which is what we're saying. We're saying engagement. Okay. Use your hind so, legs. I have to go turn off an alarm. I'm listening. So your question, or my question, that I had to remember um, for 30 seconds there, and it took some effort to hold it in mind while listening. Uh, my question was, what are you doing? How are you communicating outside of going short serpentines lead to trot Noah's arcs, lead to canter Noah's arcs? What are you doing? mechanically, brains, legs, position to help her in that, let's say third stride to say, keep that hind leg compressed so you can continue to create that great velocity, if that's the right word, for the next two strides. Val. Look it up for us, please. Oh, there <laughs> you go. Also be the right word. Uh, so that I did address on the video that you will see. So once the horse understands that you're making a curve and they need to maintain gait. So as an intellectual concept that Katniss did not really know what I was talking about because you know she would do two things. She would either rush forward to try to maintain cancer. And when I said, I, when I started to shorten the curve or basically sat back to be like, hey, relax up here. She could not do it because she was falling, falling, falling. And the other thing that she would do once she realized she, I didn't want her to just keep going, then she'd break it. Hang on. Jeez, we are a mess today. Come on, Coco. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, what am, uh, I'm frustrated this morning, you guys. We got to watch our time because I do have to go yeah. in an hour, but I have more things to say. So let's. Okay, so. So, so shut up, so, Coco, and let's get this done. Oh, my God. <laughs> so. So I let her break gate as many times as she needed to because she knew that wasn't what I was after. And then I would just say, hey, come on, canter. Right. But you kind of, you can't shush the horse, you know, be like, hey, keep canter. No, no, no. She could t tell, most horses can tell when you're not like relaxing back into trot. So she knew that, but that was absolutely what she had to pay play with is dropping to drop. So I would say that's noteworthy. And then she has to figure out like we're turning, which she knew intellectually what all that, you know, means. And you had the timing organized. And so it was really easy for me to get in time with her in terms of turning, but you still have to keep the jaw rolled to the inside. All, all things she knows, and but really with any horse that you guys are doing this with, the, the prerequisites that I just said should make sure that you have all those things. And then it's the outside rein, using the outside rein to bend the outside hind leg. But you have to, so you have to roll the jaw to the inside, use your outside rein to bend the hind leg, 
in the, in the, you know, when the hind legs are coming forward and then you have to push the slack so they can leap forward into it, which <laughs> doesn't end up looking like this, <laughs> even though that's a little bit the timing, you know, it's, and it's a little bit more, more a hold and release. Right. Well, you know, depending at first, maybe, but you really can't just randomly hold because then you really will stop the forward movement. So there's at least a little bit of elasticity in that. Um, but you've seen me get firm with her to even just get from, you know, two strides to four strides. Remember in winter, that's where we were yeah. four and, strides. And, and I mean, Corey said, thanks for asking Michael, because that was her question. That she was about to ask that question. It's the outside rain talking to the outside hind leg, but it is also, I mean, you mentioned, you know, being back and saying, come up, like, hey, there's room up here. You don't have to throw yourself forward. There's also, even though, just you're saying there's room to break gate because you can tell I'm still cantering. There is a point at which, and maybe that is what you're saying when you're saying I'm still cantering, where you are very actively saying, keep it moving, keep it moving. Even if you're not coming in with your legs and driving it forward. Like you think about a horse that's loping around and they're just kind of about to break gait and they just need that next little pop to say, no, we're still going, where there's just like one, you know, coming in with your legs or just a little bit stronger with your seat to say, no, keep, keep this rhythm going. There's a little bit of a, we are still going, to keep us coming from behind or would you say no? I would say like my knee jerk reaction to that would be to say, it's not quite that. If you have a horse on a loose rein, then, then that absolutely that can be like, Hey, because that's really just a go forward thing. But you've seen me be really strong with her in the front to say, but, but you, it, you have to, I feel like it's very, clear and Katniss is such a good example because her little brain is feeling right back to you you know where some horses don't although once again if you get to this point they sort of should be but but it's a communication thing like you're sitting up there going use this body part you know do I have in mind exactly how you're going to get this accomplished get, you know so figure out what I'm trying to say. And so it's, it's a little bit like, not that, not that, not that, while really making sure that she doesn't think it's push forward. In her case, I guess I would say, and really in most cases that I can think of, they shouldn't have to be saying, hey, stay forward. Like they probably already have that way dialed. Although, like I said, you've seen me at the very, very beginning with her be super firm and it kind of looks, you guys that were there, it looks pretty ugly for a few strides. And, I mean. Momentum is what I meant, Val, thank you. Riding Brody riding rooster i mean all of them as soon as you kind of went to moving you put them together kind of before i before you said let's go but like right away like we're now that we are moving go this way and now there's room to go forward and some of that, even though it wasn't as kind of strong, maybe to get with Rooster 
or Brody, although Rooster took a little bit of defining the front of the rectangle because he wanted to just brace his neck, right? Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. Um, that still involved not just kind of some intense holding, it involved you saying, come forward. And I guess the degree to which your horse is trying and feeling of you, like, I mean, but when I say it, I riding forward with Katniss, it wasn't like, come on, get, get forward. I mean, she's feeling of you. She's, she's prone to try or apt to try. Um, as opposed to Brody after, you know, lesson upon lesson where people are trying to be effective with their legs and not quite getting there. Like he's going to be less prone to try unless you're like no i'm gonna give you a little boot if you don't come up in there so when i say you might have to say stay forward there has to be some sort of energy in you that but you know that's a good point because but there's a moment like you can't just be sitting there at that point yeah. Although I want to say you probably will say yes, you are. <laughs> well, kind of, but this you guys will see on the video uh, is there's a couple times you got to feel around for can the horse maintain gait or get right back to canter because if they can, sometimes as they're adjusting their balance, it just it's just not going to happen. Not like there's at that time, yeah. Yeah, and so in that case, you almost let them break gate and then try again because mm -hmm. that's that's really all that's gonna happen anyway, no matter how. So, yeah. and then you'll you're see fighting, well, you're, you're fighting the inevitable. Yeah, it's like, and, and they're not doing anything wrong or misunderstanding. They might one hundred percent be understanding, but it's just not gonna get accomplished on that stride. I wish I was better at this with Piaf, with flying changes. Like I'm sure all of this applies to those other movements that are much harder for me to feel around for. But um, there is a point when you're like, okay, but keep cantering. Like you got to make sure that they a understand that, and then b you're kind of cheerleading for them to be like, okay, I really think now you could do some strides. You can do it. And so. The cheerleading, I mean, that's that's that internal, even if it's not legs coming in or this, like, I'm cantering in my body. It's that internal energy that says we're still going. Yeah. This is still an effortful piece of the program for today. <laughs> Exactly. And you guys have all heard me that have watched me ride or watched me on video. Like there's time, I, there's times when I'm like, but keep going. Like that is the sentiment. Keep going. Yeah. But it's, it's a very, it's a big deal when the horse understands that the reins are for shape. That's a huge deal, which is why I can't really do much with Remy right now to fix to make a canter left because he, he still needs to just flow forward i don't have enough he does not have, have enough confidence in um, the piece in the forward like he goes forward but there's not enough relaxation confidence sureness that that there that that is a lily pad that's a thing you know so i cannot really block him with those reins yet and squash him down although physically i don't think that's going to be tricky at all but oh another thing i should mention so i went to the backing circles because that's the thing that i do in between sets so all the warm-up all, all all the groundwork rope blah, blah, blah ride um kind of hind quarters four quarters um you know change your direction, walk, track, canner, and then usually backing circles. And that'll be one set. And then I'll do that twice, usually more. Um, but backing circle left, a hot mess. Like, 
he goes back so sweet, you know, he goes backwards, but that is the biomechanical piece that he needs for canter left is to get the ribs out of the way and turn loose laterally to the left. Mm -hmm. So that's where I can show him that liquidity in the rectangle or the, uh, the softness in the rectangle in a way that longitudinally and laterally is a change in maybe how he's going, but he won't understand that moving forward right now. It's too much because he does not have the piece in forward, whereas Katniss does. So I guess what I'm saying is, is with the Noah's arcs in particular, and with a horse that, that hasn't really, you know, doesn't move herself around under saddle, momentum. She doesn't find her her momentum. Oh, still momentum is not the right word, though. It's what? Not Bell, Bell gave the definition of velocity. Yeah, which is not right, but I guess... And not acceleration. I'll give that definition, too. Quality that designates how fast and in what direction a point is moving. I don't know. think. Maybe. I mean, unless there's saying what direction up rather than yeah. last but, but I don't know In, anyways the the using the reins and the and the rect like when they understand that you are doing things within the rectangle that's a huge intellectual concept like the rectangle is moving at a certain rate across the ground and with a certain footfall pattern Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do things with it. So Remy won't even let not, me do that. Not, not even do things like we're doing a leg yield, not doing movements. We're adjusting how our body is arranged within. I mean, picture them within confines, if you will, that are very well, def very defined, which is what the rec rectangle is but trying to create a visual in the rectangle this is the limited space within which you get to play around but there's a lot of ways in which you can move within that, that space and you know the length of the rectangle could really dramatic like you have to have some open-mindedness as to what the length be, of the rectangle is can't be rigid no but. Well, because you don't, I don't for sure know what that will be when a horse is in their, let's say their working trot, like Bonnie and I were having this discussion the other day, because I'm like, okay, girl, we're going to need to figure out our rhythmic working trot. Because, you know, she kind of goes backwards and forwards and relaxes and she's, there's, there's just no, like, this is my working trot with with her and i don't think she knows what that is you know but we've been we really haven't worked within a frame so we're just now doing like setting the front of the rectangle at walk and being like hey this means nothing she's very um her neck is very bendy uh so the base is not necessarily there where let's say on remy or um i would say rooster you know he doesn't overdo anything necessarily too dramatically. Whereas she gets behind, that was a big one, behind the vertical. Mm -hmm. Super behind the vertical. I just had to wait. I'm like, okay, so hang on just a second. Like, I will show you. This does not mean to give to the bit behind the vertical like that. No, no, no. Anyway, so we're having this talk and then I'm saying it out loud to her just for fun. I'm like, yeah, I think maybe like something like that. And then we would go, you know, for however long, half a circle or something, and we'd go back to walk. But it's, she has to be a part of that discussion. Because I don't know what her working trap is going to be. I don't know what the length of the rectangle is going to be. So I can't, I, I might, you know, I have to allow, I guess I'm just saying, I can't set that well, and be rigid. Yeah. And I, as you're describing that, this is similar to what you're saying there, but even like qualifying the way I um, 
stated it there in order to kind of illustrate this is the space within which you have to move in, that you have to work on rearranging yourself. There has to be a float put in there or an openness to the way you feel to the horse when they rearrange themselves. Like you can't be static. You can't say, here's the front of the rectangle. Like, otherwise they are. They're going to start doing even more things. Like you have to say somehow, and that is by giving them space, pushing a little float, kind of feeling that feeling of there we are. Um, when they, they hit upon it, otherwise they don't know that that's the way you want them in the rectangle, and they're going to keep experimenting. So a client was riding a horse yesterday and the horse she wasn't really releasing she didn't have the feel for all of this and the horse started just really going behind the vertical it's like that's not the answer but you have to be recognizing when he is offering you the right answer and not just holding there so he starts thinking that's not the right answer and exploring elsewhere because then she was like not not really realizing what she was doing and releasing for that so he started searching down there as if that was the answer so where he, he doesn't do that for for me so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so oh two other I don't, how much time do we have because i have two seven, things i need to... seven minutes go oh, are you kidding me no time talk fast talk fast so um two horses Noah's arcs really feeling like they needed help with the outside rain for two two different reasons. One, was Stephanie's mare um, Rosa, and you know we were kind of doing Noah's arcs, and I, you know, this it, happened a lot recently for whatever reason. I don't know why I'm telling you to do this, or I don't even know why I'm doing this but this is what i feel like oh. you should maybe do shut up oh. don't fall smug imagine that <laughs> were they throwing stones so yes threw stones a few years ago and i guess i need to pick up the stones and apologize but i'll be ready to throw them about something else um <laughs> i can't just hold all the stones but now you understand yeah. yes <laughs> so but so we started messing with that like to the right to the right i think it's to the right anyway one direction or the other she was they were just resistance kind of expressing itself all over that side of her body. A little bit the ribs, but it was mostly the nose just kind of fighting up and out when she'd asked that side to turn loose. And experimenting with different size arcs and she wasn't really getting troubled. There just, there wasn't a change coming and she was getting more, she's kind of prone to get real fussy and kind of angry more so than worried or whatever she just kind of has an attitude like if you ask her to go even if you're asking nicely and she's been this way from the get-go and buck's like don't even worry about it because she started her in sheridan um but like just ignore her bad attitude about things and just keep releasing for her positive response and it'll, that'll go away but that's kind of her way of responding to things she doesn't quite understand or appreciate is to get a little bit mad at you right so on that side she was starting to go this is really frustrating i i'm not finding it yet i'm resisting probably don't quite know where you want me to be even though the ground works pretty damn solid whatever i like you got to get that outside rain in on that side the other side just fine but you have to do something to say soften so you can roll the jaw a little bit more and have it come through the whole body. So anyway, it worked better. But we were really trying to do it on a, a 
you know, inside rain primarily or inside rain only. And it worked nice on the other side. And I, I working the uh, uh, Noah's Arcs with Katniss, you know, I, I really felt probably with her more dramatically than other horses when off that inside rein, it would really reshape her longitudinally, laterally, shift the weight to the outside. Like she probably more than other horses kind of had, had that aha moment. Like, wow, this is, this is how this is, this is what, why this is valuable. This is why this tool is, you know, and I don't know that I carried it to the point where it was as helpful as it could have been, but I felt moments of it where it was like, aha, aha. So anyway, that was a side note back to Katniss. So we did that with Stephanie's horse. Then I got in this mare that pretty quick to get tight, blind spot issues, just things being on both sides of her body, so on and so forth. Um, canter transitions are always just or not counter transitions, even trot transitions, just throw the head up and starts to scramble. And it's just, she was just ridden and started very poorly. Um, so very shocky about things. No relaxation and fluid movement, whatever. So all that's getting a lot better. But in the trot, I've, in order to help her go from this is first get her prepared for the trot. Don't ask her to trot unless she's really prepared to get there. Cause if she's not, it's guaranteed going to go into that kind of jackhammery nose in the air, having to define the front of the rectangle saying that's not helping us. Um, but anyway, getting her flowing in the trot and finding those moments where I could release and she just kind of roll along um, relax over her back a little bit longer rather than that constricted back and nose in the air. So um, I had to say soften. There's a, it's not helpful for us to be up there fighting this. I know, I know. And I didn't even get to the one I really wanted to talk about. Anyway, so I went to do Noah's arcs with her, focusing a little bit more. Can I find this on the inside rain? It was a effing disaster. I mean, just, she was not going to find it. She needed me to come in with that outside rain. And it, it took us kind of back to her not trusting that this was going to be a good thing because she was so lost and got so frantic and you know, and I was messing with like, okay, maybe I just hang in there. Like maybe I can get this to come through. So like you are getting frantic and I don't like that. I want to help you, but let's give this a shot and see how it, it works. Um, anyway, it wasn't too, too much, too far into it. And I'm like, no, we gotta, we gotta help you find this until we're ready to do that. And um, when you said short serpentines, Noah's arcs, Noah's arcs at canter, I haven't done a lot of short serpentines with her. Maybe that will help her to find that. But she is relatively loose laterally. Like she's she's more broke than you'd expect her to be for as terrible as most things feel. Like the transitions, the, you know, everything coming up here so tense when you get things switching eyes behind her, the flag, you can do a lot from the ground and she's comfortable with that. But if someone else has a flag and is moving you know, behind you and then you go to, to roll her up one way, that's, so there's all these things that are just, she clearly was not exposed to and there was no quality to transitions and all that. She's relatively good at shaping around your leg, feeling a rain and getting around and flowing that way. Um, why was I even saying that? Oh, so once she's relaxed, if I help her travel different at the trot, prepare for that transition into the trot, make the transition using a soft feel, you know, defining the front of the rectangle. Once she's there, she's very good at flowing and being loose in those arcs, but she could not use that arc in like a Noah's 
arc sort of exercise or whatever to find the softening over her back. And so, so and, and that's a great point because the outside rain is what will do that. You just can't think that the outside rain is going to make the curve. The inside rain makes the curve. The horse following the inside rain makes the curve. And the outside rain is for softening the yeah. outside of the body. Yeah. Because you should not have to soften the inside of the body. If you do, you just say, use your inside rain to say more lateral. Yeah. Uh, but that's, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. So there were just ex two very clear examples that you wouldn't need to do that with Katniss as much because the inside rain is with a little bit of time going to create that lateral and the longitudinal. You just kind of have to wait for her to find it. Yes, it, except it wasn't bending the outside hind leg. Yes. It, it cantered, but at trot, the curve did its own business. I didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm remembering what it felt like with Katniss at the trot and her sorting that out. That was not going to happen with these two horses. Sure, sure. Okay, last thing. Not going to talk about it, but I'm going to mention it, and we will talk about it next time, maybe. If we or remember. call me. Or call you. Celine is the horse's name, like Celine Dion, except spelled different. Um, I keep wanting to call her Selena. Frisian cross of some something. Not my, not my favorite. Not my style to work with. You know, wouldn't a go pick horse. a bunch. <laughs> wouldn't pick a bunch of them, right? Probably gonna end up starting this horse. I'd rather work on the ground to start it. You know, working on the ground is one thing, and then you got to go ride the thing that makes it even worse. But anyway, for those of you that love Frisians, I'm glad you wrote love Frisians are not my favorite to ride. Um, but anyway, this is just groundwork. Yeah. So here's just this is groundwork. That's the only reason this horse is here, because this horse has gotten to where she is kind of attacking people any time they go to drive her away. She's kind of been taught, you know, coming at me is the way to get this all to happen. Um, so in short, we were talking earlier about um, the change just for Katniss are so so small and then there's this little pop of a, a change that's fairly noticeable this minute to this minute and then changes one ride to the next or one week to the next might be more dramatic um, particularly because things can shift so quickly so day one she was still kind of scared of the flag and she the owner had just started using the flag and she's like this works but I know it's working just because she's scared of it. Like, this is the only thing I can do to keep her from coming at me. That's why. It's because the horse is running away from it, right? So day one was kind of just getting her to not pull on the lead rope, not come and attack me, not be afraid of the flag, not kick out. But it wasn't, there wasn't really as much frustration in coming at me or kicking out because she was, I was mostly just saying, you don't need to run away away from this and you know it it came together pretty quick i didn't really do a lot because the change was just pretty substantial so it wasn't a large or long time i was just like you're you're cool with this flag you're not leaning on the rope you're going around me you're moving your hind quarters we'll call it good for today we're backing up a little bit um starting to reach the front end lever b the next day i I'm kind of halfway expecting, okay, we got a lot done yesterday. Like, this is going to kind of be a cakewalk. Well, now she's not scared of the flag. I mean, she was initially for just a short while, but then it was pretty quick. Oh, yeah, flag not going to hurt me. Then you ask her to go with the flag, and it was right away. Is like, oh, okay, this is why this mare is here. Because it was kicking out at the flag. It was, I'm not moving. It was swinging, you know, the ribs and hindquarters into you like, I'm going to try to line you up so you stop doing that. It was, um, yeah, she kind of go up with her head and in with her shoulder, then in with her ribs and, and trying to swing her butt toward you. And you're like trying to keep the nose there, but also going 
like it's going to take me a second to get your whole body rearranged because you just went from round around me soft on the lead rope to boom sprung against me and swinging your butt toward me so you're actually backing up a little bit to keep yourself out of kick zone while you can drive here drive there bump here to get her rearranged it was pretty intense and then if um, thinking and then if you're using the lead rope then if she's thinking to come right at you you know the, i don't think right it, any, yeah i was firm enough with the lead rope that that was that hadn't been used effectively no, nothing had been really effective but i could i could bump with that lead rope and it would just set the whole horse away from me right it was just okay. like it just drew it that just drew the boundary so i and good thing because if i had driven with my flag more to say get off of me that would have just triggered i mean based on her response to it once she was not afraid of it and the scale's description that's going to just trigger her going now i'm going to fight harder so i'm glad with that lead rope i could just kind of set her to the outside and get get everything off of me but um so much more to say on that one it was really interesting okay um, so Celine the Frisian cross yes and I don't know if I'll remember everything that was interesting a week from today you better call me. Just call me Just I'll call, call you me. and tell you yeah <clears throat> okay also the molly mule that I wanted the Mustang molly mule went for how seven well she's it's not done yet she's oh, up to seven, seven thousand I told you that right mm -hmm. yeah so just Emma is starting a GoFundMe um, no, she wants the Molly mule. <laughs> no, somebody all obviously wants the Molly mule, and there's way too many horses that are not wanted to fight for one that is wanted. <laughs> yeah. So okay, Gotta well, run. let you go. We're ten minutes late. Um, stop scheduling things at eight thirty. Sorry, nine thirty in the morning. Um, but call me so that we can talk more about that. And jo so we'll see you guys next Thursday morning at six thirty a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 8.30 Central. And, okay, Michael, see ya. Oh, you guys are going to keep talking. All well, right. I just wanted to say, if you guys want to know what we're talking about, then you need to join Horsemanship Insider, which you can do via the link in my profile so that you can watch the videos that we're talking about because that's where I'm making videos for my friends, basically, and um, as an extension of our discussions. That's that. All right, you guys, have a good week. See, See you next time. Bye. Bye.